LNG TV, the official media partner for the World LNG Summit and Awards 2021. Well, Sophocles Papa Nikolaos now joins me here at the World LNG Summit. And Sophocles, you're from Blue Grid, which is a relatively new company. Tell me a little bit about it. Correct. Um, Blue Grid is a company that we started three years ago. It is a downstream LNG supplier. In fact, it is the first dedicated downstream LNG supplier in the region of Southeast Europe and the Southeast Mediterranean Sea. Your founder and CEO, why did you feel that there was a gap in the market or how did Blue Grid come about? Well, downstream LNG or small-scale LNG, depends uh, how people refer to it, is a market that has been growing very fast all around the world, but not in our region. And the reason is that there was no way to reload LNG on a truck to distribute it downstream or on a small vessel to distribute it to maritime customers or, or islands. Um, so we realized that uh, our region is virgin, uh, pretty much, uh, and uh, that is going to change by around... Uh, June next year, when we will be able finally to load LNG on a truck. So we decided to form Blue Grid a little bit ahead of time, talk to customers, start converting them from existing fuels like fuel oil, diesel, or LPG to LNG, um, doing the same for transport customers um, by investing in fueling stations uh, for trucks, and doing the same for maritime customers by building an LNG bunkering base in the major Greek ports. So in a nutshell, I know I've said a lot, but um, we decided to basically um, make a step before the market uh, ended up materializing um, in order to be ready and set up by the time the supply comes. And is the focus mostly on the shipping industry or on land transport? There are three areas where we focus. Uh, two of them are onshore, one of them is offshore. The first one is industrial customers located in remote locations, remote meaning without access to gas pipelines. Um, so for these customers, we develop end-to-end -end LNG supply chains, including an LNG truck, an LNG storage tank, and a small-scale regas on the other end. The second um, type of customer is transport uh, fleets of trucks mainly, in which case we invest in LNG filling stations, which we will be supplying by truck, and they will be supplying the final customer uh, with uh, LNG dispensers. And the offshore segment is bunkering, um, in which case we focus on either ship-to-ship -ship or truck-to-ship uh, bunkering operations in the port of Piraeus initially and in additional Greek ports in the future. And of the three um, sector, sections that you work within, which do you feel has the biggest scope? Which are you most excited about? All three of them, yeah. I mean, the, these could be three separate businesses, uh, but we decided to form it all under one. The reason is that the region that uh, we focus on um, is not as vast at the moment, um, so it wouldn't make sense to silo them. But all three of them have great growth potential, and we're very excited about it. So the, the theme for this year's World LNG Summit is the future of the LNG industry in a decarbonized world. Where does Blue Grid fit into this equation? Um, well, uh, LNG by definition fits into this equation. So Blue Grid is the company developing the downstream LNG supply chain in Southeastern Europe. Um, and by that, we're offering our customers the option to consume the cleanest fossil fuel available. Uh, so that, in and of itself, is a great step forward. Um, and on top of that, I would say that LNG offers um, a very realistic pathway to full decarbonization um, by basically substituting it in the future with its cleaner derivatives like bio-LNG, um, and then uh, in the deeper future, possibly other fuels like hydrogen or ammonia. So all in all, we believe that this is the right pathway for the majority of our customers. Is the growth of the downstream LNG sector, is that pivotal to the decarbonisation process? Yes, I believe it is. I believe it is because it is uh, a quick win. It's a low-hanging fruit. Um, the technology is there. Commercially, it makes sense. Regulatorily, um, it is possible. Um, so there's really no reason why customers uh, in either of the three segments that I described previously should not switch to LNG. And where do you see Greece in the big picture of, um, of LNG in the, in the world market? Where's, where, where's their place? At the moment, uh, Greece uh, and LNG um, have to do uh, more so with importing the product, regasifying it and supplying pipelines in Greece and in neighboring countries. 
In the future, in the very near future, uh, LNG will become a tradable commodity in and of itself and we'll be able to reload it and supply it downstream for various uses as a fuel. So um, Greece is gaining uh, a more important role in the LNG to gas market because its regas capacity is growing. There's Revithusa, which has grown. There's Alexandrupoli, which is probably going to take FID very shortly. And there are a couple of other projects in the books. But Greece is going to start uh, uh, getting on the map with respect to small scale LNG capabilities as well. Um, and has a very good chance of actually becoming the most competitive and reliable source of LNG for downstream distribution in the whole southeastern European area. Why do you think that is? Because um, there's a reliable regulatory framework, there is a very robust infrastructure. Revithusa will offer truck loading and uh, ship to ship reloading capabilities. And um, the region is basically at the moment at a lack of uh, all these options. And what, um, how significant is it therefore that the World LNG Summit and Awards next year is going to be taking place in Athens? It's amazing. I was very happy to hear that yesterday. Um, it's great because it's home, but it's also great because Greece is really going through a turning point with, with respect to its importance in the energy transition and LNG in particular. So we'll be very happy to host all of you next year in Athens and hopefully we'll be able to share some of the progress we've all made and to talk about some real projects that we have underway. And in terms of um, following on from Rome's hospitality, what's Athens going to offer delegates? Well, uh, Athenian and Greek hospitality is uh, world famous, so uh, I have no uh, uh, concern about that. But with respect to the city itself, uh, um, everyone knows Athens for uh, its culture and what it has to offer in terms of uh, antiquities. But uh, you will all realize that it's a great place to visit uh, in winter time as well. Um, there's a lot of fun things to do. There's great food to eat. Uh, and there's great things to see. So uh, we all look forward to showing you around. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much for talking to Thank us here you. on LNG TV.